All right. Hello. So on our last meeting, I introduced it as being either November 17th or 18th, and I was so busy just debating the 17th and 18th that I didn't notice it was April. So today, I think it's April 25th, and this is our Proto School Weekly Call, and Ollie is going to show us some cool robot stuff he built. It's robot time. Um, so I was talking to Terry and Diogo, and they were like, oh, now you can click a solutions button in Proto School. And I have an open pull request that updates IPFS, JS IPFS to uh, the latest release. And Terry's been asking me if it's safe to merge. And I was like, I don't know. It's just the latest IPFS, um, which is not great. I should know whether it works or not. Uh, but it's the kind of thing that if I click around the site, then I've done the work once but then we'll want to update JS IPFS again. And I don't want to have to click around the site again to know whether I broke everything. Uh, so roll in the joys of automated end-to-end -end or AKA integration testing where uh, I'm, I'm just trying out using a tool called Cypress and it basically lets you run the site in a fake browser and make some assertions. It, it uses a robot to basically like click around the site and you write code that looks a bit like mocker uh, unit test kind of code, but you're saying things like, okay, open up this page, uh, find this link in that page, click it. You should then go to the next page. All right, now if you like, what you should do is then find a view solution link in that page, you should click it. You should wait a few seconds and then you should be able to submit that response and it should be successful yep. and it should take it. So if we had a script that could do that, that would be so rad. Well, here's the first start. <laughs> Here's, here's one. It's it's going to get better, but it's runnable today. And what this code is saying is, go visit the basics and submit the solution. But me saying that it does that is no good. What if? What if we could run it? What if we could stop it and run this one? And it opens a browser, and it very quickly navigates to the basic, and it jumps there, and it builds a solution, and it gets a success, and it jumps to the next one. Da, 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 da. So what's fun about Cypress is uh, it lets you like roll back in time. So you can see all the steps that it took to say that. So it came to the, the basics jumping off page and it found this link to the first lesson mm -hmm. and it clicked it and it asserted that the URL changed correctly, which is kind of redundant, but hey, uh, expects to have gone to the first lesson, expects to find a view solutions button, expects to be able to click it and then it expects that the reset button will become visible. So I think about it expects to, this is how it kind of knows that the editor, the problem with browser testing is everything is asynchronous and you're always kind of waiting for the browser to do the thing. So we click the view solution and then we wait for the reset button to appear because that's what I'm using as my signal that the editor's updated. And then we're looking for a submit answer button, submit and we click it. And I think we're then expecting to click on the next one. And then expecting to be taken to the next class. Ta da! Um, so now, cool. that, now that works, we can, I'm going to fill it out so that it does all of the basics lessons and make it run in CI so that when we push changes, we'll know that the basics lessons are working. And then I'll have to do the harder work of proving that the file upload lessons work. But yeah. that, can come, that can come later. Um, okay. Is it like, are you telling it the first page to go, like the landing page to go to, and then it is determining whether there is a next lesson just by the clicking and whether so, the button turns so the, to next? You can, see, can you see the code? Yes. Um, so the code is saying, like, go visit this URL. Uh, and then it, the test is saying you should be able to click on a link to the first lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so if it doesn't find a link to the first lesson on the basics page, then it, the test will fail, which I think would be a sensible Yes, sensible it would. Um, it's then asserting that the URL changes to that next URL, which is kind of redundant because we just clicked on a link to make it go there, but whatever. Um, and then it's just clicking on named links. So what I've done is to decouple it from, we may choose to change the wording of some things along the way. These are kind of like jQuery style selectors. 
So what I've done is I've sprinkled in some data dash CY attributes around the code base. So okay. CY. So we know that these attributes are used for the integration testing. Gotcha. So we're free to change the language. We're free to change the styling. Yeah. We're not using any of those things to as the hooks. Um, <coughs> So that's just a best practice recommendation from the, the Cypress docs. They're like, don't, don't bind it to things that you might want to change that mm -hmm. don't change the meaning of your tests. Um, but yeah, that's the magic. Cool. Um, so the, the, theory, the theory is uh, I will get this working in CI so that we can then merge PRs like upgrade to JSIPFS without worrying if it breaks the site or not because the yeah. tests are tense. The, I guess the reason I was asking the question is I'm thinking about whether the new structure of like the courses.json would help you like make it iterate through every lesson that exists. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly planning on uh, making that programmatic, not yeah, right. something that we have to update to keep in sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'd, like, I'd like to make it do all lessons that exist. That will get harder when some of them are file lessons, but I'll just have to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hope you like it, friend. Yeah, that's super cool. We have had, I mean, it's not, it's definitely not as simple as like, oh, if the new version of IPS works, it works here. Because we have had things where it was like, oh, some old version of the API or whatever that it changed or we could have made something simple or whatever. So it's really cool to have that as an option. It's the other side of it is because it's going to be using the view solution button. It will also be mm -hmm. testing that our solutions pass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, easy. I'm just adding a note. Is this something that's, this is just on your computer right now. It's not in a, it's not something I should be linking to, right? That's fine. Uh -huh. Nice. Um, yeah, so in other news, I'll just quickly cover a couple of quick things. So I'm still working on the MFS tutorial, but the functionality of being able to build a tutorial that uses file uploads has now been merged. So that's something that Michael and I worked on together quite a few months ago, I think, um, and has been ready. But the lovely Diogo convinced me to separate my PRs from each other, which is a clever plan. Um, so it's now possible to build file uploads lessons. Um, and we've also, as we've gone along with updates, Diego and I have been updating the instructions for building tutorials. So those kind of get a little bit better with each UX PR that we put in. Um, and we'll have some people testing those soon as they build content for IPFS camp. Um, we have a Nairobi chapter coming soon. And that's about it on my end. Um, it's very cool yeah. that the Nairobi chapter. Yeah. It, it is exciting. I think that will be our first Africa section on our magically self-producing list of chapters. Um, so that's very cool. And I will let Diogo show us next week um, views of some of the stuff that he has added, but it's now possible, as Ollie just mentioned, as you saw there, to view the solution to any lesson. And I gave a heads up, the um, Seattle group is having their first meetup today. So I gave them a heads up about a couple of new features like that that you want to know in advance of your attendees showing up. So that's an option, um, being able to log some things to the UI. If you want the user after they submit code to see like, oh, what's in my IPFS now, you can have it share a message. Um, so there's stuff like that that we can give more, more detailed demos of. Um, anything else people wanted to talk about? I missed your check-in before the meeting. How's it going, Dan? Quite well over here. Great. Lots of exciting things in Denver. Uh, I'd say the one thing I could report on is I'm going to be submitting a talk for Denver Startup Week uh, to try and do uh, a little bit of introduction stuff for IPFS in general, as well as uh, potentially a proto school demo. Which is exciting. Cool. It's a really large event here, uh, so it'll be fun. Super cool. And I should say, 
Oh, wait, I have announcements. I have event related things. So we have talked in the past on this call about IPFS camp, which is coming up in late June in Barcelona. And the deadline for applying to IPFS camp is tomorrow. So I've mentioned this before, but if you are involved in building the community around IPFS, that would be a good thing to mention when you apply to IPFS camp. It is a selective process as opposed to just a sign up. So do share all your interest in and work to build the community as well as cool stuff you're just doing with IPFS. Um, and the event is not, so if, if people are like, purely interested in IPFS because of Filecoin, you probably won't get the content you're hoping to get at IPFS camp. We're really kind of focusing on IPFS itself. Um, but I hope that I will see some of the chapter organizers there and I know a lot have already applied. And then my other news, as of yesterday, we have officially launched offline camp. So I can be less cagey about my announcements now. So that will be happening August 2nd to 5th in Grants Pass, Oregon in a lodge, two lodges in the woods, um, and Protocol Labs is our first sponsor, sign on. That event is for people who are interested in offline first, which is sort of this movement aimed at making technology work in low bandwidth or no bandwidth scenarios. So the event is not specifically about decentralized, but some people, when they approach offline first, choose to solve the problems with decentralized, some don't, um, and, and anyone who's interested in those issues is welcome. Um, so you can check out offlinefirst.org slash camp is the official uh, site there if you want to learn more about that event or feel free to ping me if you have questions, but we'd love to see some, uh, some people applying there. Those are my event announcements, I think. Go offline camp. Boom. Yes, very excited that it's coming back. Um, and Dan has been helping us with ideas for faux fire because this will be our first time having an event based on campfires in a location with fire ban at the time that we're there and we don't uh, want to burn down the pacific northwest that happens by itself we don't need to contribute so getting creative we'll see what what recipe we end up with there are a surprising number of resources on the internet about building faux campfires so we'll get there anything that else sounds like, that sounds like a really sweet niche of the internet <laughs> but it's there are so many there's like paint pool noodles to look like logs you got your streamers with fans blowing on them you got your white noise crackling sounds you got like led lights through like red haze to make the coal you know there's a lot of options so it's a rabbit hole of options Sounds exciting. You'll just have to be sure that it's not too realistic looking. Otherwise, you might get, <laughs> get some trouble, uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> some We're remote things. enough that we won't be caught, I think. Nobody. Uh, okay. Unless we literally c catch the forest on fire, I think. We're mm. so remote that not many people will see us. But. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. Anything else on Proto School or related front you want to chat about? It's looking really good, you guys. I'm excited to see it progress. Yeah, it's been really helpful having Diego go around so we can crank things out a little faster with all the new UX features. It's going to give a lot more options as we build content. So it's been very cool. Ooh. Other people help too. Ollie, Michael, et cetera. So, all good. Cool. All right. Well, I will let you guys have a little time back. And we'll see you all next week. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye guys.